Hello everyone, this is Federica, I'm part of the DocCT team and it's my pleasure to introduce you to this live webinar of LUMSA University. So today we will be talking about how to make conscious decisions and we will be finding out more about these um, international university based in Italy. And today with us we have three professors of LUMSA University. We have Sheila Chapman, Piero Polidoro and Filippo Giordano. And uh, we will um, advise you to write all of your questions uh, in the Q&A box that you find in your Zoom window. And we will be answering at the second part of this presentation. So please feel free to type all of your questions and they'll be answered in, um, during the second part of the presentation. So before starting with the actual presentation, I wanted to ask our speakers some questions to get to know a little bit more about these universities. So maybe um, the uh, Professor Chapman can talk to us about the advantages of studying in a university in a university that is not maybe such a big in terms of size university for the students. Okay, uh, with pleasure. Um, LUMSA ranks uh, as a, a small, medium-sized uh, university. It's growing rapidly, mind you, and maybe some years of time, I, I'll have to say something totally different, but for the time being, it's, uh, it remains a small to medium university. Now, I think that this is a great opportunity for the students. Uh, uh, Rome has uh, uh, a couple of huge, very large universities. I think one of them is, I, if I recall correctly, the biggest in, uh, in Europe, and I studied there. Well, studying in such a huge university actually means you're little more than a number in the midst of a huge crowd of students. Being in a small university means uh, that makes everything easier you can uh, interact with uh, your lecturers very easily. Uh, questions can be put, raised at, uh, uh, le during lectures and they can actually be answered. <laughs> and that's important. Uh, it's very easy to get into contact with your lecturers if something isn't clear, if you need some extra support, some information, whatever. It's uh, even uh, uh, easier to make friends, to interact with your fellow students. Uh, um, so uh, it's, it's much easier to get uh, also support from, uh, um, from secretaries, from the uh, administrative part of a university. So um, a medium-sized university is a great opportunity. It's, uh, uh, it's even easier to be friends, to get to know Italian students, which uh, I mean, uh, I see that uh, I recall from, from my own experience, uh, foreign students tend to be to group among themselves and Italian students don't mix with uh, uh, foreign students. Well, when numbers are smaller, all this is much easier. Mm -hmm. So I, I really think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a plus to being able to study in a, in a medium sized university. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, so we talked about a medium-sized university, we talked about international environment, and we talked about Rome. So I wanted to ask the Professor Polidori, if maybe you can talk a little bit about the advantages of studying in Rome, and perhaps you can give us some numbers about how many international students are at LUMSA. Yes, thank you. But as for Rome, we can say that uh, Rome uh, is, of course, the Italian capital and uh, it is an international city with a high profile cultural life. In addition, uh, cost of living in Rome is more convenient than in Northern Italy. So we've got a lot of opportunities, but it is also affordable. As for uh, our university, um, there are many advantages, uh, uh, those that uh, have been uh, described by uh, my colleague, but also, for example, the fact that we have a welcome office that is completely dedicated to international students. And we've got more or less 4% of our students that are international students. Uh, that is a um, pretty good result. Uh, but we've got to also consider that there are some programs, uh, uh, and we will talk about this, in which this percentage is uh, uh, much higher. 
Perfect, thank you so much. So the Professor Poidoro talked about the cost of living. So I might want to ask the Professor Giordano a practical question. So how affordable is to study MLUNSA? If you can give us some insights about cost and affordability. Thank you, Federica. Uh, so our the, the, the policies related to fee of our university are aimed to be inclusive uh, and uh, and contemporary to guarantee a certain level of quality in uh, our teaching and our in our programs. So basically, we, we can say that our fees are affordable, and in the sense that are in the middle between the the, the fee of public university basically and the, the fee of a university private institution that generally are higher than the, the public uh, you know, universities. So uh, we can see that LUMSA is a, okay, it's a private university, it's a Catholic university, but the, the fees are, are affordable, no? considering the fact that we are private and the private means a lot of services that, that we provide. And, uh, and uh, it, private means uh, to have an environment, an enabling environment for, uh, for the study, for the opportunities of our students. Uh, but the other things that I want to underline uh, also, okay, we have an international contest where it's in, in interesting to study. Uh, I think that the value of, of LUMSA compared to the other private university, because we are private, uh, is uh, to be a small university as uh, the colleagues uh, Sheila Chapman mentioned. But uh, also, uh, yes, we are small, but we are a university with many disciplines. So uh, a student uh, on management, for example, can 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 uh, study uh, uh, some uh, courses can follow some can attend some courses uh, of psychology for example from, from the other department can follow um, courses uh, about arab uh, arabian uh, languages uh, historical courses uh, semiotic so there there is a, a, a strong exchange between colleagues and also students that uh, are embedded in different departments and are and have many uh, in scientific interests. So the multidisciplinary context of studies, I think, is a plus of our university, in my point of view, of course. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so much. So thanks for the professors for sharing those insights with us. And please feel free to type all of your questions into the Q&A about the services that Lumsa is offering, about tuition, any sort of question that you might have. Now I think we're ready to start with our presentation. I leave the floor to the professor Giordano, who will be introducing the first slides for today. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Federica. Um, so I'm, I share the, the screen. Um, In the meantime, I remind everyone that they can use the Q&A section to write all of their questions. Perfect. Okay, Thank okay. you so much. Perfect. Uh, OK, I'm Filippo Giordano, and I'm an associate professor of management at Lumsa University. And I'm the chair of the program, the graduate program in management and finance. It basically is a master degrees, uh, two years master degrees, so 24 months. Uh, I will provide you some key key elements uh, to understand our uh, our project, our our uh, our program. Uh, um, so you you can of course uh, you can uh, you can uh, go in depth you can uh, uh, take other information from our website and uh, our brochures and so on but I want to underline what are the key elements uh, of our program that are four basically the innovation so basically innovation is at the base of the um, development of, of of our society and and, uh, and uh, is a uh, today one of the core concept in the business community uh, so when we talk about innovation we talk about uh, the digital transformation of our society uh, so we talk about uh, the um, digital transformation of financial services uh, uh, the commerce uh, the um, so all all uh, all these these things basically um the, the second the second uh, key issue of our course is sustainability 
that is strictly linked with innovation because uh, uh, of course the, the we are in a phase where is increasing the awareness that we need to transform our our business our way with which we produce and consume uh, goods uh, and we have to transform in a way that is more uh, sustainable for the planet, uh, for the environment, and uh, all the the at a different level, all the discussion about the, the policies to support economic development worldwide uh, are related to the the topic of sustainability. Uh, we all know the agenda twenty thirty of the uh, United Nations. So we all know about the SDGs. And, uh, and we all know also about the Green Deal at European level. So, and all the discussion uh, related to the, the plan, uh, resilience plan in, in Italy and in Europe, uh, uh, and all the discussion in business communities about the sustainability. So how to make our economic uh, system more sustainable for the people and for the planet. Uh, the third element is uh, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is not, not, doesn't mean for us, uh, so, so we don't teach how to become an entrepreneur, but we, we teach how to be entrepreneurial. So we think that uh, to be entrepreneurial is an important soft skills that people have to have in the, in the, in the work environment. So to be entrepreneurial means to be proactive, means to to take initiatives uh, means to be a problem solver. And uh, these skills are important nowadays, not only to be a real entrepreneur in the sense of someone that set up a startup, but uh, to, to, to be entrepreneurial means to, to, to live, uh, to, 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 to face uh, the challenges uh, in uh, a, a, proactive, a proactive way. And of course, the fourth is the uh, internationality, in the sense that uh, uh, now the, the a manager, the business community is international. Uh, to 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 succeed in the in the in the job environment, you need to be able to work in a multicultural context. You need to to speak different languages, and uh, it basically, you need to be. Uh, um, uh, to, 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 you need to, to be able to work in a multi in a multicultural uh, uh, contest, of course. Um, so we offer two majors, uh, one in, a, in the entrepreneurship that uh, we labeled entrepreneurship and innovation for sustainability, uh, because just to underline uh, the, this uh, interaction between innovation and sustainability, sustainability is the first driver of innovation in the business model of the enterprises. So innovation in the packaging of products, in innovation in the product manufacturing processes and, and so on. And the banking and finance for innovation, where the focus is uh, uh, all uh, the innovation uh, waves uh, that uh, are happening in the uh, financial um, services industry, and the sort and what we call uh, uh, fintech. Um, the, the 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 study plan of of these two majors, of course, is strictly linked in the sense that the first year is basically in common. There is a, a ju in this, just a, 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 a course uh, that differentiates uh, the different measures in the first year. Uh, basically, in the entrepreneurship uh, measures, you have organizational design and behavior. And uh, in the banking and finance uh, uh, for innovation, you have a sustainable investment banking. But the first year is in common. So you have an exam of a, um, a course of international economics. So you have a, a course um, about financial reporting and analysis, financial management and markets. And the, the second year, uh, you have a, a, a differentiation in the study plans. Uh, in the path uh, uh, related to uh, the entrepreneurship and innovation for sustainability, 
you have the these courses so business models innovation corporate strategy digital marketing and uh, you have to choose two elective courses from uh, uh, the other majors of programs in the in the university uh, we are very proud also to have a digital transformation lab that is a, a, a very practical activity aimed to understand uh, uh, what means uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some, some technological aspect uh, of uh, this uh, digital transformation that is happening in the business. So basically in the digital, digital transformation lab, you study artificial intelligence, you study blockchain, you study um, robotics, uh, and, and, and so on. Of course, there is the inter internship and the thesis. Uh, banking and finance for innovation, I told you uh, the, the first year is in, con in common, the, uh, but the, the students of banking have sustainable investment banking as a, a core uh, um, course. In the second year, you study FinTech, you study risk management in banking, you study venture capital. And of course you can choose uh, uh to elect the course from the, the other the other majors uh so feel free to email me and for further information you need and i'm i will be very happy to meet you in rome uh, in uh, next autumn Thank you so much, Professor Giordano. And I can see that some questions are arriving, which is great. Keep uh, writing all of your questions because, because we will get back to you later on after the presentation. So uh, we now leave the floor to the Professor Chapman, who will be talking about other degrees offered at Lumsa University. Please. Um, I'm here to talk about uh, this course, International Relations in the Digital Era. Well, um, okay. Now, why, what's the need of uh, uh, having a course uh, that, uh, how could we say, uh, updates international relations and uh, with a focus on the digital era. Well, actually this course here is a general description of uh, uh, the course. And here, by the way, is uh, one of the buildings where uh, our department is. There, I'll show you in another uh, photograph, uh, um, another of the buildings where our uh, courses are held. Well, uh, generally speaking, uh, courses, the master's courses in international relations, as you know, as all the students who hold a bachelor's uh, degree in international relations know, is generally a multidisciplinary approach. We have uh, main areas in economics. Uh, I'm an economist, by the way, uh, law, uh, history, politics, um, uh, computer science, languages. Well, this course is not different from the other ones in this sense, in the sense that it has, uh, uh, it presents these main areas, these main uh, groups of subjects. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that it, uh, um, how could I say, uh, it does an effort to interpret uh, all the new, um, developments in these areas that are essentially linked uh, to um, innovation, as my colleague said, to the digi digitalization of, uh, uh, of relations. So this is uh, um, a fairly recent course. It was created, uh, uh, it started, it was created a bit earlier in 2017, we started thinking about it, but actually, the first year was uh, enacted in uh, uh, 2018. So it's uh, um, fairly uh, recent, uh, fairly modern in its uh, uh, approach. And uh, uh, it tries to um, develop uh, as far as it's possible, um, develop new ways of teaching 
uh, it tries to uh, involve students in uh, laboratories, uh, in case studies, analysis, uh, seminars, um, and uh, uh, what else, together with, let's say, traditional, normal uh, type uh, lectures. Um, I'll do this. Okay. No. Um, oh, okay. So here I try to uh, put down some of uh, the reasons why if I were a student, I would be uh, uh, interested in international relations. I would choose uh, uh, this course. Um, here are the reasons, uh, the main reasons why I think it's, uh, um, it's a very interesting opportunity. And uh, uh, here I would just like to uh, underline what I've written there, that uh, um, in accordance, in, uh, according to our, uh, um, um, to how we've organized the course, uh, many uh, courses are not held by uh, academics. Many are, but some aren't. But they're held by uh, ambassadors, by uh, experts, uh, by uh, analysts uh, uh, from international uh, organizations. So it's uh, in order to try and provide students also uh, not only with an academic strong qualified background, but also with a more practical uh, approach. And here I wrote the last two points. I uh, simply put um, some of the, let's say, main areas uh, where uh, students can uh, um, apply for uh, in the labor market. So uh, we have a various position in diplomacy, international organization, international uh, multinational firms, uh, firms that uh, have uh, um, contacts with uh, uh, other, uh, with, uh, in, in an international um, environment. So this is uh, the curriculum. Uh, it's a two-year course, uh, as all masters are, and uh, uh, here we have uh, the, um, the subjects you study. See, here I wrote to the left of the main areas. As you see, they're the traditional ones, but here we have, to the right, we have uh, um, the um, practical, um, uh, the name of the courses, and you'll see that uh, uh, there is uh, an effort to try and uh, uh, consider the most uh, uh, up-to-date uh, um, questions. Uh, so you have international economics, uh, then you have <coughs> a language. These are the languages you can choose from. I will speak about languages uh, uh, in a moment. Then here, you've generally studied politics. Well, now you're going to uh, study how uh, democracy is changing with uh, uh, innovation, let's say, with uh, computer science and uh, so on. You have direct uh, uh, democracy, the possibility of having direct democracy. Um, computer science, you have intelligent and open source. And uh, here are, uh, you can choose among these. Uh, again, you see this uh, uh, attempt to um, develop the most, uh, uh, let's say, the most innovative and recent aspects of uh, uh, international relations. Now, if I move to the second year, you see here again, we have this approach. Mind you here, uh, concerning a language, you uh, must choose uh, the second year of the language you selected in the first year. It isn't that you can select, let's say, French a first year and German in the second one. You must follow and uh, uh, the same language. And again, um, for instance, here uh, you uh, study a, a legal approach to big data, how to manage this massive amount of data, often coming from various sources, new sources, that is now uh, uh, um, 
uh, a distinctive feature of, uh, um, of our times, okay? So these are the uh, subjects you will study. And uh, I want to finish with this useful. This is another uh, of the buildings. Um, this building is in front of the other building. So this is exactly our uh, department. So right here, uh, just to show you, to introduce you to where you will uh, uh, study if uh, uh, you choose to come here. So I already said that it's two years. It's held in the very center of Rome. All Lumsa, this is something we didn't mention at the, the beginning. Um, Lumsa is in the very center of Rome. So it's uh, uh, very easy to be, um, to get there. And uh, it's uh, uh, possibly very, very pleasant to be in the, the center of Rome. So this is the address where, um, our department is. Now, probably you could be interested in the uh, requirements, uh, the admission requirements. Now, ideally, well, obviously you have to hold a bachelor's degree. This is obvious. Uh, ideally, it would be preferable in some uh, social science or other, let's say. Um, the ideal candidate should have some uh, uh, amount of credits in history in the main areas of uh, uh, international relations, that is history, law, economics, politics, and sociology, and languages. Mm -hmm. Now, read this parenthesis, this is important, some degree of flexibility is allowed, especially for international students then that come from different uh, uh, universities where the approach is completely different from, from that uh, that we follow in Italy. Uh, concerning languages, I said I was going to return to uh, the question of languages. You should have at least B2 level in English because the course is entirely in English as you've seen. And you should have um, an, a lower level is admitted. Uh, for instance, uh, at least an A2 level in another language, and you are supposed to choose that language in your course. So it should be one of those that you saw here, for instance, that is French, Spanish, German, Arabic, or Chinese. Uh, by the way, all these courses are French for international relations, Spanish for international relations, the second year has this uh, uh, extra um, focus on the language of uh, international relations. So you should have some initial level in the language you choose. And then also uh, you should have a, a B2 level in Italian. Again, some degree of flexibility is uh, uh, allowed. Uh, we're perfectly aware of the fact that not many students in the world <laughs> from other countries uh, study Italian. Italy is a small, uh, geographically a small country. So it, it's quite common that people aren't familiar with Italian. So, uh, I mean, I'll repeat it again, some degree of flexibility is um, generally allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes uh, uh, international students are interviewed uh, um, on the web and, uh, um, and then the, the knowledge of languages is tested by the language center. If uh, um, you're not, you have no knowledge whatsoever uh, of Italian, you can take uh, the, a course uh, by LUMSA in Italian, obviously free of charge. So it will provide you with uh, uh, the course uh, in Italian if, if you need it. Hmm? So uh, these are the uh, requirements. And uh, generally, uh, I've done many interviews to international students, uh, um, and it's very rare to find students with all these uh, uh, requirements. Uh, but we generally um, 
verify the motivation, the uh, enthusiasm, the willingness of students uh, uh, to come to Rome and to study at, uh, at Lutz. So this is more or less the, the main things I, I could think of. So this is my name and this is my email and uh, uh, I'll be willing to answer uh, all your questions, okay? Thank you so Thank you. much. Thank you so Thank much you. for this great overview. And yes, I can see that more questions are actually arriving. Um, keep writing them, we will be answering them shortly. And now leave the floor to the Professor Polidoro, who is going to share his presentation. Thank you so much. Hello, good morning. My name is Piero Polidoro, and I'm the chair of the master's degree program in marketing and digital communication. I'm an associate professor in semiotics at Lumsa University, and I teach in this program web design. Um, our program aim is to prepare students uh, in the fields of uh, digital marketing and uh, digital communication, which are, of course, uh, strongly intertwined today and uh, they are strongly interconnected uh, with all the other kinds of marketing and communication activities. Uh, so our students uh, uh, will, uh, uh, will work in different fields related with the marketing, uh, with the digital world. For example, uh, they will deal with integrated business communication, integrated because today it is very difficult to to think about uh, a communication that is non-digital. Uh, even the mass material and physical things such as an event, except for events in the COVID era, uh, are strictly interconnected with digital activities uh, which prepare and conduct and follow up uh, uh, the, the, the event. So uh, what we do today is basically integrated communication and in this integrated communication, the digital part, uh, the digital marketing and the digital communication is, uh, uh, is uh, more and more uh, um, important than, uh, than yesterday. Uh, and other fields are the um, social media. Of course, social media is uh, only a part of digital communication, but it is certainly one of the most important today. And when we talk about social media, we, we talk about uh, uh, very different uh, jobs uh, uh, which can go from uh, the social media manager, that is a little bit the, the, the entry level and the social media planner, the community manager and so on. And this, uh, this uh, word plan and planning is very important and we can see it also uh, in the digital marketing field because uh, what we try to uh, teach our, uh, to our students is uh, not only how to communicate, but how to plan communication. This is very important and, uh, uh, and it is very evident uh, above all in the marketing part uh, of our subjects uh, and uh, of our program. So our, our students are experts in digital communication uh, in a way that lets them to plan communication, to understand not only uh, what uh, has to be said, but when, where, with which channels, and so on. Advertising and communication plans is very important. This is the field that is also called media planning. And even in, in this case, we, we understand and, uh, and we see that the digital component is very important. So for example, when we do media planning, we do not, uh, we do, not do very much uh, uh, the traditional kind of advertising that, uh, that means how to buy uh, uh, spaces for uh, commercials in TV or on newspapers and so on. But what we do is uh, to study, practically study how to manage the new forms of advertising such as, for example, Google Ads or Facebook uh, uh, advertising and so on. And in general, of course, our students have to be uh, experts uh, in a field that, uh, in a concept that is uh, central to everything we've said uh, uh, till now. That means in brand and in brand management. 
Of course, we, as we will see, we have also some subjects that are that are focused on specific fields, on specific kinds of application of these uh, uh, of these skills, which are, for example, events with the event management, sponsorship, fundraising, um, corporate social responsibility, and so on. Which are the strengths of this uh, of this uh, program? Uh, first of all, uh, our approach. Our approach it is, is a mixed one. What I always say is that we do not do only practice because this is a master's program and a master's degree program. And so we need uh, a conceptual framework. Uh, we need uh, theories and models, uh, uh, which are the way in which we can really understand what's going on and, uh, and, what's will be, and what will be the next big thing. So we need this uh, theoretical part, but uh, in every class, uh, we always apply uh, this knowledge, this theoretical or modal uh, um, knowledge uh, or uh, knowledge made of models and so on. Uh, we apply it to case studies uh, and to practical uh, uh, cases. What we do in each class uh, is, to, uh, um, uh, is to have uh, 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 a part in which, uh, uh, with a professor, uh, we uh, we have talks uh, or uh, we have case studies. We have a group or individual exercises and assignments uh, and so on. And I think that uh, uh, this is uh, well, uh, this is um, pretty good uh, uh, expressed, uh, uh, pre uh, pretty well expressed uh, by our mixed faculty because uh, uh, the faculty is composed in part by academic professors such as uh, uh, me, for example, and uh, professional and chunk professors that are who are professionals that bring in their classes uh, an updated knowledge of uh, the most recent tools or trends in the market and so on. And uh, this, is, I think, that is the basis of an effective teaching, an effective teaching, and uh, of a high student satisfaction. Our, our students are very happy of this mixed approach, uh, with this uh, attention to practical aspects and, uh, and to how to apply the models that we study in the theoretical part. And I've got to say that uh, we have some good, really good results, for example, in the last year, um, we won two important competition. Uh, you, you know that we got two sub programs. One is in Italian and the other one is in English. Students from the Italian program won uh, the Italian prize uh, for uh, uh, um, marketing for university students, uh, a prize that is organized by the Italian Association for Marketing and students from the Italian program won this prize. And uh, for example, as for the international class, uh, two students from the international class, for example, some weeks ago, won um, an international competition uh, from a, 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 an important a Japanese uh, uh, corporation. And they were first, uh, and they won this prize, this competition, first of, uh, out of, uh, I think, 8,000 teams from all around the world. Um, I, I, I spoke about, I talked about the international class. I think that uh, one important strength of our uh, program is uh, are the international students and not only uh, Erasmus students coming from abroad, but our students, uh, uh, international students, foreign students enrolled uh, uh, at LUMSA. Um, it depends on the year, but uh, as for the international class, more or less, um, a percentage that is uh, between the 30 and the 50 per percent, depending on the year, um, is composed by non-Italian students. So that means uh, uh, not only European students, but uh, also non-European students. We've got students from Africa, we've got students from North America, from South America, uh, from, and from uh, uh, many parts of Asia, from, uh, uh, from Mediterranean countries uh, uh, until Vietnam and far, uh, far East countries. Uh, we've got more than 40 Erasmus Plus destinations, 
and uh, we've got also some double degree agreements. In this moment, we've got a, a double degree agreement uh, with the FAP in Paris. The double degree agreement is an agreement according to which a selected number of students of the program go on the second year abroad, they study there, and uh, in the end, they get uh, both degrees. So they have, for example, a degree from Lumsa University and a degree for, from uh, FAP Paris. Uh, and uh, in this moment, we've got uh, this uh, double degree agreement with FAP Paris uh, that is in French, and we've got uh, another agreement uh, with Griffith College in Dublin that is in English, of course. Even if I, I must say that in this exact moment, uh, the, the, the agreement with the Griffith College uh, um, is uh, um, we are renewing uh, the agreements with the Griffith College, but I'm pretty sure that it will be uh, valid also for the next years. The only difference is that uh, in the case of the double degree with a FAP, it is free, except for mm, the, the fees of LUMSA, while in the case of uh, uh, the Griffith College, there are some extra fees to pay. But uh, I, I can give you all the information or further information uh, if you want. Uh, we can mm, uh, rapidly see the, 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 the program, uh, um, uh, how uh, the program is organized. In the first year, we've got classes such as web marketing and digital advertising. The, the names, I think, that are, are pretty clear, so I will no go um, we, I won't go uh, very long about the explanation of the single classes. Uh, so we got web marketing and digital advertising, communication metrics that is uh, uh, about uh, uh, the, the, the um, uh, web analytics and data mining and so on, customer relationship management and marketing, so CRM, brand management and media planning. This is the class in which we explain how to buy advertising uh, through uh, on, on Facebook and Google, business planning and startup, corporate social responsibility, business English, and we've got a project work. Mm, while all the, all the classes are have a, a strong part that is a, a practical, that is application of models and theories, the project work is fully practical. So uh, it is the study and the development of a case study. For example, in this case, the students have to do a marketing, have, have to produce a marketing plan. And then on the first year, we've got the theology uh, class. Uh, as for the second year, we've got events management, digital writing and visual design, sponsorship and fundraising, web design, that is my class, digital public relations, and uh, another project work the lab social media management and web analytics, uh, or if you want, you can do uh, the uh, the tirocinio, that is the Italian word uh, to say a stage. The stage, uh, you can do this, uh, you can do the stage, uh, um, you can choose between a stage and the project work. As for stage, of course, uh, it's a matching between uh, your expectations and the, the, uh, the internship position uh, that are available in that moment. But uh, even on this, uh, but, but also on this uh, matter, if you want, I can give you uh, further information. Um, I end with this uh, uh, two um, links uh, that goes to the, the two most important and interesting uh, uh, web pages about the program for you. The first one is, an, uh, is uh, uh, um, a page in which you can find some information about the program and all the information about the, the enrollment process. But the second one, practical information, is a page that uh, it, it has been conceived for enrolled students, but I suggest you to go there because there are a lot of practical information and uh, uh, above all, there's a table with all the classes and these classes are linked to the corresponding syllabi. But I always suggest to, uh, to uh, prospective students to read the, the single syllabi because so they have a complete and deep idea of what we actually do. Because in the syllabus, you can find the goals, the topics, uh, the methods, the textbooks of each class. The only thing I, I've got to uh, clarify is that uh, now you will find the syllabi for the current academic year, 
So uh, please consider that, of course, uh, uh, the, the next syllabi that will be published uh, uh, more or less at the end of September uh, could, uh, could have some light changes in the, uh, in the single class uh, uh, programs, so, or also uh, there could be some professors that change. But in, uh, in general, uh, uh, they gave you, uh, e even if you read them now, uh, they can give you a, a, a pretty, uh, a pretty uh, solid, consistent idea uh, and valid idea uh, of what we do in our uh, program. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the Professor Polidor and the other professors for their presentation. As anticipated, it's now time to answer all of the questions that you might have. And I can see that we actually already received a few questions. So we'll just start um, reading them from the first one that we receive. So one of the first one is actually from Peter, is asking if there is a possibility to work while study. He, he doesn't ex um, refer to a specific course, so maybe if we can give some information about the classes, if it's like everyday classes, if uh, students can actually work. The professor Polidoro maybe can help. Okay, what? we've got many students that work during the program. Uh, mm, I, I have to say, uh, attendance uh, is very important because uh, uh, because of the um, the practical part of our classes, it would be a pity to be enrolled and not attend classes. Uh, in that page for enrolled students, you can find also the timetable, for example, for my program, and you can have an idea of the way in which, in general, classes are uh, organized during the week. But please consider that, of course, it, it depends on the year. But uh, in general, I know that many students uh, work outside uh, the university uh, in the days in which we do not have classes uh, or in the hours in which you, we do not have classes. But uh, uh, of course, it is very, I think that uh, attending classes is very important to, to, to get uh, uh, everything you can get from, that class, uh, from those classes. So it is not impossible, uh, of, uh, but uh, it has to be compatible uh, with the timetable and the time schedule. Perfect. Thank you so much. We have a press, uh, question for the Professor Chapman. they asking, how should I prepare for the admission process? So if we can share some sort of tips or advice on this. Um, well, actually, um, if you don't have uh, the credits uh, that I specified, um, you really don't have to prepare for the admission process. Uh, um, you will probably have uh, an interview, and uh, during this interview, we will uh, basically ask you about uh, your motivation, why you want to study here in Rome, why you want to study at LUMSA, why you're interested in international relations. So uh, you should think and be able to answer, I mean, to give yourself a good, um, uh, answer to these questions. You should really see if you're really interested in uh, this course, uh, and then you should communicate it uh, uh, to us. Uh, um, if you're, uh, if we, we see together uh, that you're lacking uh, a lot of background in uh, the main themes uh, uh, of interest if, of um, the, the course uh, of a program, we could, you could be advised to uh, do some extra reading. So we could advise you a number of uh, uh, of books uh, uh, to work on. Let's say if you're um, if you're lacking uh, uh, sufficient knowledge in uh, the domain of history, in the era of history, you could uh, be uh, requ requested to study a book of history, okay, or of law, or whatever, or economics. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, asking, uh, they asking us when there will be the availability to enroll in the marketing and digital communication master course. So basically, if we already have some sort of deadline for this course. Uh, you can write to the admission office. I do not know if we, we've got the address, uh, but it, it should be international admissions at Slooms. I will check it. And uh, you can write and they will contact you uh, to explain which are the, the steps for the enrollment process. But uh, the enrollment process, uh, in this moment, you can apply uh, and you will have a call and um, you will have a, a, an assessment uh, uh, with me or with one of my colleagues. Uh, so in this moment, uh, the enrollment process is uh, already uh, open. If you are um, a student with a, 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 a known Italian degree, as for students uh, that have uh, an Italian degree or that are complete, uh, they are, uh, that are finishing their uh, Italian degree um, uh, program, uh, uh, BA in Italian, uh, they have to, to wait for the bando. Uh, but in, in this case, I, I think that uh, it will be published uh, uh, in, in April or May. But as for international students, they can ask the, the international office, uh, the welcome office, and uh, uh, they will give you all the information. Perfect. I already put the address on the chat. It will be international.admission at loomsa.it. And also, we wanted to let you know that we will be sending you an email after this event. So you will also be able to check all the details and get in contact with Loomsa later on. Uh, we have a question also for the Professor Giordano. So they were wondering if we can share some sort of statistics about placement after graduating, and they're asking if it's hard to find a job in Italy. At the moment, we can't hear you. Your microphone is muted. Yes, 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 okay. yes. Uh, sorry for, uh, for before, but uh, I had uh, families uh, and babies in eruptions. Don't in, worry. So, so, uh, uh, so st statistics uh, about placement are uh, uh, they, they are aligned with the the the, the, the national uh, the national stat university statistics. So uh, um, so I think that we are. We are close to 90% uh, at the end of the first year after the graduation. Um, and uh, um, you ask me about the job, no? If it's, if it's hard to find the job in Italy. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, uh, okay, we are, we are in a post-COVID or not. We are anyway during a pandemic uh, period. So um, I don't know what will happen in the next months. In general, we believe that... Uh, the, there, there, there will be um, some movements, positive movements, in order to increase you now the, the the placement of uh, of the new of the um, the students, you no. Know? And um, um, anyway, we we organize many webinars with the most important consultancy firms, really uh, with the aim to 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 you now to to put in contact, to create this link between our students and, uh, and uh, consultancy firms like, I don't know, EY, KPNG, PWC. So um, we are very committed about the placement of our students. And uh, of course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this answer. So Anna is asking, um, during the course, do we have the, any internship opportunities provided by LUMSA or is actually the students that will have to look for an internship? She doesn't specify with, for which course, so maybe I don't know if either the Professor Polidoro or the Professor Chapman would like to answer this question. Maybe the Professor Chapman, she can give us some insight, yes, about the internship, how will it work? Yes, we have an office for uh, internships for stages, as we call them, and uh, uh, very often I am told they have uh, wonderful opportunities and they uh, can't manage to fill them up. So if uh, a student wants to find his or her own uh, internship, uh, uh, 
she or he can do it and it must be approved by um, the, the office. But uh, if not, uh, we're, uh, we, can provide, uh, we can provide them with all the help they need. Mm. That's really not a problem here at UNSA. That's great to hear about all of these amazing services for students. We have a question for the Professor Polidori. It's actually Polidori asking us uh, about the double degree. It is also available for the Italian course, Marketing and Digital Communication. As for the uh, agreement with the Pop Paris, it is open to both uh, uh, programs. So, so to, to students coming from the Italian class and to students coming from the, the international class. As for Griffith College, uh, till now it has been opened only to uh, students from uh, the international class. And of course, they've got a priority for a language reason. And one of the things that uh, we are trying to um, uh, um, to decide with our friends in Griffith College if uh, is uh, if we want to open uh, the program the double degree uh, to uh, Italian students to sorry to students from the Italian class too. Perfect. That's a great news. Thank you so much. Um, there is another question. Maybe the professor Giordano can help us. So basically, they're asking. Sandra is asking us is a general question about how can I enroll to the university? So maybe if we can briefly remind how the admission process will look like. Uh, the, the admission process uh, um, uh, has some uh, different uh, you know, aspects uh, related to the different programs that, uh, of course, uh, students want to attend. But anyway, we have a very efficient desk, uh, international desk. So I, I suggest because, OK, um, I can provide you some information, but uh, I think uh, it's important to, to, to gather information from our website and to email uh at any hour of the days of the week <laughs> to the international uh, to the international office so we have a, a i think uh, uh, if i remember well we have an address specifically dedicated to admission that is international dot admissions at lumsa.it anyway so i i suggest to 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 email uh, in order to gather specific and precise information uh about uh, about the the procedures and the deadlines perfect so sandra you already put the address uh, under your answer so please please feel free to reach out to, to these uh, to this email address so they're asking us if there is a dormitory in Lumsa University. And there is also another question. So at the beginning of our presentation, we talked about how Rome is as not expensive as other cities, maybe in the north of Italy. So they're asking us if more or less we can give an estimate of how um, expensive it is to live in Rome. I don't know if the professor uh, Chapman, I can see if she would like to answer maybe the, thank you. There are some halls of residence here at LUMSA, and, uh, uh, but generally uh, we have uh, even there um, an office that helps students uh, find uh, accommodation in Rome. Now, I was wondering uh, uh, how much could it cost to live uh, in Rome? Um, Let's say it could be, it, it depends on how much your rent uh, costs. Uh, apart from your rent, I think a student could live uh, on something less, uh, a slightly less a uh, thousand euros a month, more or less. It depends uh, if uh, transport isn't expensive. Uh, buses aren't expensive here in Rome, but it depends if you, transport you use, it depends how much, I mean, depends on obviously your habits and, uh, but I don't know what my colleagues think. Uh, I would uh, reasonably estimate something even below a uh, thousand euros. And then you have the rent uh, uh, and that is, uh, uh, that can vary a lot. In this moment of pandemic, I am, uh, um, People tell me that uh, rents are um, relatively cheap. So 
<laughs> That's at least one good thing of uh, the pandemic. Especially here in the center. Thank you. Yeah, of course. And then, of course, depend on the lifestyle of the person. But this, I think, is a reasonable amount. So I don't know if the other professors would like to add on anything to this. Or no. Good. We also had a question. So at the beginning, we talked about how it's affordable to study in Lumsa. And actually, uh, of course, there is the international office that will be able to answer all of your questions. But they're asking if there are any possibility of scholarship for international students. So if international students can actually apply for specific scholarships. I yeah, think you uh, Filippo, Filippo, right. Go, 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 go. go. Okay. Um, I was answering that the best thing is to write to the international admissions office, but I'm pretty sure that uh, there are some possibilities because I know from my students, from my, my international students, that many of them have public scholarships. So there's certainly a way but to have precise information, the best, because of these are more than academic, these are administrative uh, aspects. So the best thing is to ask for this information uh, uh, and to, uh, to the, the International Admissions Office. Perfect. So we already put again the contact and we will be sharing with you via uh, email um, in the later days. So you can actually get the email and email them straight away. So we right. actually not know if people as other inform further information can of give. course. I don't know if the professor Giordano has some other information to share about scholarships. No no I I I, I suggest anyway for because uh, so scholarships are something always you know, ongoing. Uh, so what so and it's an evolving situation. Anyway I'm, there are a scholarship and the financial aid from uh, uh, our public uh, administration, in particular, the the the, um, the local governments at the regional level, is in charge of uh, um, fund and support uh, with uh, with scholarship uh, university students. So there, there are there are um, uh, there's a, a ranking uh, of the specifically dedicated to to foreigner students. So anyway, um, even on this uh, specific issue, international office uh, can provide the deadlines and information that are a little bit uh, disaligned with res respect to the deadline of the, the procedures process. So basically, you need to apply to the program and then to apply to the scholarship. Perfect. That's that's very clear. So basically, basically, if you want to access a scholarship program, you need to be a student of Lumsa. Okay, so the first step is actually putting an application yes. through, and later on yes. there will be an assessment about the eligibility for scholarship. Absolutely, yes. Perfect. Thank you so much. We actually answered the majority of the question that we received. So before um, uh, thanking the speakers, I actually wanted to ask them if. They had, there was something that they wanted to share with the audience. So a lot has been said during the presentation, but maybe if there is a final piece of advice that you feel like giving to the audience tonight, maybe starting with the Professor Chapman. Yes, I, um, I wanted to mention the fact that uh, uh, the course in uh, international relations in a digital era has, uh, uh, is, uh, like uh, uh, my colleague Polidoro said, uh, has a, a double degree. Uh, I, I didn't put it in my presentation because I didn't think that international students would ha uh, have been interested in uh, international degrees. Coming to Italy, I thought maybe they weren't interested. Uh, instead, we had a question on that uh, double degree presented in the other course. So I just wanted to mention there is, we have a double degree. We just renewed the, the agreement. Uh, uh, 10 students per year can go to the University of Lille in France, in the north of France, and uh, um, study languages and study. Uh, take the courses there in international relations and they gain a double degree uh, from LUMSA and from uh, uh, the University of Lille. So that's a possibility. I hadn't mentioned it, but it, it, it's open there. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. It's such a great opportunity for students. Maybe to the Professor Polidoro, if there is anything that he felt like adding. No, I think that um, I gave all the information, the, the basic information, but if you want, you can talk, contact me at p.polidoro at, um, sorry, uh, p.polidoro at lumsa.it. Perfect. Um, Professor Jordan, is there anything that you wanted to share with the audience? Uh, I just want to say that uh, as a LUMSA professor, we are, we are totally committed because it's the mission of our university to, to support and to help students to succeed in their, in their study and uh, in general to provide all the opportunities and all the tools uh, that give us the possibility to the student, the motivated students, of course, because uh, motivation is as the base of, uh, of um, of the success in everything, of course, but I, I, I think if uh, someone from uh, from Asia or from uh, uh, other countries uh, decided to come in Rome to study looms, I think is a motivated student. So I I I'm, uh, I, I don't I don't have doubt about uh, doubt about this, but I want just to ensure uh, all of you that uh, our university is totally committed uh, on our mission. And so we are, uh, we are very, very end on in the, our relation with the students. Perfect. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank the professors for their time, for the presentation and for answering the question. And I'd like to thank you all for being connected with us tonight. We will be sharing with you an email over the next days with all the contact information for the International Admissions Office. So if you do have any further questions that maybe we didn't have time to answer, you want to get uh, further information, please feel free to reach out to the uh, international office. And uh, thank you so much again for our speakers. And we look forward to seeing you soon at the next Lumsai University webinar. Have a great evening, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Federica. Bye. Thanks. Bye. bye, Piero. Bye, Sheila. Bye. Ciao.